Shalom friends, this is Daniel, and this is another episode of My View as a Jew. Before I get to today's message, I just want to uh, give you a quick update. Uh, currently, uh, we are in the, quote, Passover Easter season, and I know there are some of you who celebrate Passover, and there are some of you who celebrate Easter. So I am wishing joy and a wonderful uh, occasion whether it's a Passover Seder that you're attending or a Passover Seder that you are hosting. I hope it's a wonderful time and that if you're having people at your Seder that have never been to one before, I hope it's an eye-opening occasion for them and it motivates them to understand more about the Jewish roots of the faith and uh, motivates them to understand more about the importance of unity and bring down the walls of separation. For those of you who are uh, observing Easter, I pray that is a joyful occasion and that um, it's a transforming period and that you have a wonderful time with your family and friends on this most uh, holy uh, of occasions uh, being Easter. And an update as far as we're concerned, um, we've been very busy getting the house prepared, uh, cleaning chametz, uh, getting it all out. Um, of our place in preparation for our Seder that we're going to be hosting. We have a number of people coming and we're going to have house guests staying with us for several days as well. So we've been very, very busy and wouldn't you know it, in the middle of all this, Devorah pulled her back out. So please uh, keep her in prayer because she is in some pain. It is improving, but it's been with her now for about three days. And uh, so we just really uh, covet your prayers that she will uh, recover from this completely and that she'll be able to do everything that she loves to do in terms of preparing uh, the Passover Seder meal and what have you. She's a wonderful, wonderful cook. And then uh, we're going to be gearing up for our upcoming trip. Um, We leave soon to head to the U.S. and we've got an extended uh, trip this time. We're going to be in Florida. We're going to be in Texas, we're going to be in New Mexico, we're going to be in Colorado. I'm coming to uh, California for several days while uh, Devorah stays in Colorado. Then we come back to Florida and from there we head down to Bogota, Colombia for a week. Uh, We'll be invited to participate in a Messianic conference down there. Then we're back to Florida and then up to Virginia and then back to Florida and then back home to Israel. So uh, it's going to be a long trip. Uh, but we're meeting some new congregations and new people, and we're very excited about it, so we certainly appreciate your prayers. So um, that's kind of the update for now, Um, and hopefully uh, your holiday season, depending on if you watch this ahead of it or afterwards, was, is wonderful and joyful. So let's get to today's message, which is basically called, Let Not Division Be Your Guide. What do I mean by that? Ooh, Well, you know, John 17 is a prayer all about unity. And these days we have two separate holidays. We have Easter and we have Passover. Well, I'm assuming, at least I hope most of you watching this, whether you're Messianic or whether you're Christian, recognize that the so-called Last Supper was, in fact, Yeshua's Passover Seder. Yes, look at scripture and it will tell you exactly what was going on and why he drank the wine of the new covenant, why he broke the bread. This was a Passover Seder because let's not forget, Yeshua Jesus was born, raised, lived, taught, died, rose, and will return as a Jew, who also, by the way, was Torah observant. And another reminder that Shaul, or Paul, was also a Torah-observant Jew. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But what I want to talk about now is some specifics. And how did we get to this place where there is this separation? Well, we all know about the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea took place in the year 325. And it was several hundred years after Yeshua had gone Uh, to the right hand of the Father, and the Council of Nicaea did several things, not the least of which was canonized what books were going to be part of Scripture. But it also did something else. 
it became the foundation of separation between Jews and those who became Christians. Let me read a quotation. <clears throat> it was declared to be particularly unworthy for this, the holiest of all festivals, that being Easter, to follow the custom of the Jews who soiled their hands with the most fearful of crimes and whose minds were blinded. In rejecting their custom, we may transmit to our descendants the legitimate mode of celebrating Easter. We ought not, therefore, to have anything in common with the Jews, for the Savior has shown us another way. We desire, dearest brethren, to separate ourselves from the detestable company of the Jews. That was Emperor Constantine. So the Council of Nicaea became a catalyst, whether we like it or not, became a catalyst for what became eventually known as replacement theology. What's replacement theology? Replacement theology is the notion that because the Jews corporately did not accept Yeshua Jesus as Messiah, they therefore abrogated their position as the God's covenantal promise holders. And therefore God rejected them and therefore the Jews became permanently damned, if you will, and no longer part of God's covenantal promises. And were replaced by the Christians. Well, my friends, I, I hate to tell you this, not only is that incorrect, there's nothing in Scripture that confirms that. There is nowhere in Scripture, no place, that says God has rejected his people. As a matter of fact, Paul, a.k.a. Shaul or Saul, confirms just the opposite. And let me read to you if you have your Bibles. Okay, if not, Romans 11. I say then, God has not rejected his people. Has he? May it never be. Now, here's where you find out more about Paul. First of all, he's saying God re did not reject his own people. He is confirming he himself is a Jew. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he chose in advance. So here Paul is doing two things. One, he is confirming that God has not rejected his own people, which defeats any notion of replacement theology. And two, Shaul or Paul is confirming that he is not a Gentile either. He is a Jew of Jewish pedigree from the seed of Avraham, from the tribe of Benjamin. So for any of those, any of you out there that might think that Paul converted from being a Jew to a Christian, he did not. And by the way, his name didn't change from Saul to Paul. If you look at Acts 9 and read the whole chapter, which is called Saul's conversion, there's nowhere in that chapter where it says that his name was changed. His name remained the same. Many people called him Paul when he was outside of Israel, for example, in Corinth or other areas where there were very few Jews and he was, he was mixing with Gentiles. Just like you got a nickname, Theodore or Ted. Well, Saul becomes Paul when he's outside of Jerusalem and he's in a Gentile country. Formerly, his name did not change. Just something to consider. Hopefully, you'll <laughs> see that for yourself in Scripture. But I want to get back to the whole idea of separation and unity, okay? We know who our Messiah is, at least I hope we do, right? Hebrews 13.8, Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are we in agreement? Okay, if we're in agreement, I heard a collective yes out there, okay? If we're in agreement, let me read a couple of more passages to you. 
referring to Passover. Exodus 12, 14. Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord throughout all your generations. You are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. Throughout all your generations, a permanent ordinance. Okay? Remember that. Let's look at another scripture. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. So, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He speaks about keeping his commandments, keeping his regulations permanently throughout all generations. And God commits himself to be the God of the Jewish people, Jewish people throughout all their generations, to the thousands, thousands, <laughs> kind of hard to say, generation. My point here is, for those of you who believe that the Jewish people are no longer part of God's covenant. For those of you who think that Yeshua came and did away with the quote old covenant and established a new covenant that separated from the Jewish people, and we know that Yeshua was a Jew, and we know that Paul was a Jew, do you think God didn't realize that when he brought the Torah and gave it to Moses on Mount Sinai? Do you think God didn't know that generations ahead of that, his son was going to come and his son was going to preach the gospel, if you will. His son was going to preach unity. His son was going to preach repentance. Okay? Do you think that God was thinking at that time or when Yeshua came that it's now time to separate from the Jewish people? It's now time to establish a totally different covenant? When God is a covenant keeper, not a covenant breaker, why would he separate himself from his own people? Think about that. God didn't write those words about the Jewish people being detestable. Constantine wrote those words. God does not, I don't think, and I hope you are with me, that God doesn't think the Jewish people are detestable. That God doesn't think the Jewish people are not still his chosen people. God is not finished with the Jewish people. And we are so thankful that so many Christians are beginning to realize this and want to hunger more for the Jewish roots of the faith and not promote and practice replacement theology and division. Come together as it says in John 17, look at scripture through Jewish lenses. These lenses. Okay? Now, I happen to be a Jew, all right? It doesn't mean that I see things through Jewish lenses because there are plenty of Jews who don't understand things from a Jewish perspective. On the other hand, there's a growing number of Christians, Gentile Christians, who are understanding things through a Jewish perspective, through Jewish lenses. So I say to you, during this Passover Easter season, come together, look at Scripture with Jewish lenses, because it was written during a time when there was so much division, and it shouldn't be that way, my friends. The Bible is one book, from Genesis to Revelation. Let the fact that it is one book symbolize how important it is for us to be together in unity and not go around preaching things that have no basis in Scripture. Replacement theology has no basis in Scripture at all. And I implore you, if you come across people 
who believe the Jewish people have been replaced and the new covenant does not include them, please, please pray with them, show them, go to scripture, demonstrate that God is not finished with the Jewish people. Why do you think so many churches are now having Passover seders? They want to bring people together. And I think God is crying when he sees division. And I certainly don't want to practice it, and I hope you don't either. So depending on when you see this, before or after Easter and Passover, again, I hope it was joyous, is joyous, and that you will do everything you can to promote unity. Direct people to us if you'd like. We're happy to help people understand things better. If they're not understanding things from an actual scriptural perspective, we're happy to help. Well, that's about it for this message, friends. Um, we certainly appreciate your prayers and support. Uh, please uh, like us on our Facebook page. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, invite others to do likewise. We appreciate your support. Uh, and please consider continuing to support us because uh, we could use uh, that, those resources to continue to record these videos and especially our flagship program, Revelation to the Nations. So you can go to our website, which is www.blessisraelnetwork.com. Click on the Donate tab, uh, and there you can make a donation. And you can also sign up for our updates and uh, just send us uh, a note uh, expressing your feelings or what have you about any subject that we've talked about. So God bless you for now and uh, Shalom and Chag Sameah from Israel.